and then we'll move out to uh, our friends and the Zoom audience. Sure. Uh, I'm Joey. I live at 273 South Street. Last name? Joey. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate hearing the perspectives of these the end users that are going to be directly impacted as well as the presentation. Um, and I also just wanted to quickly add that personally, you know, as uh, a millennial and potential future home buyer, I am in favor of seeing more small efficiency homes, type homes come on the market, particularly ones that are within walking and biking distance to downtown. So we don't have to continue to, you know, clog the neighborhoods with car traffic. Uh, and it looks like this project does contain an aspect of that. So I just wanted to add that voice. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else at city council chambers? Okay. Then we'll move out to um, our participants on Zoom. And if you would raise your hand, um, we'll call on you in that order. So our first one would be, uh, I believe it's Jacqueline's iPhone. I think you're unmuted now. Thank you. Uh, Colin McCraner, Northampton. Uh, speaking of last minute submittals, eight files were added to the permit file for the proposed project at 8 View Avenue today online. Our residents have not had time to review or respond to these submittals. So um, I just want to share that. I don't think the public, the planning board, or the applicant and his landscape architecture consultant fully understand the seriousness of the repercussions of this proposed project and the destruction of the significant Norway spruce forest and wetlands at 8 View Avenue. If they read either of the two petition letters that oppose this project, which share a combined 67 unique signatures, maybe they would have some sense of the catastrophes that await if this post project was passed by the board. Uh, this proposed project allows uh, it proposes to allow 3,691 square feet of unmitigated, untreated stormwater to sheet flow into North Street or into the wetlands. North Street already floods. Uh, so that is unacceptable. It originally proposed to cut down 29 of 35 significant Norway spruce trees. The revised plan only saves two more trees, not four, but that would not be very much anyway. Uh, the plan is to replace less than 25% of the existing significant trees with two to three inch saplings. From what Kent uh, shared earlier, uh, it takes these trees decades to, to grow to the point where the, the trees that are there now um, and to provide the benefits that they already are providing. Um, so that is unacceptable. Uh, especially in a ward that has, you know, 24% mature tree canopy. Also unacceptable is Carolyn's statement in her June 13th staff memo that advises the board to approve this project based on the cookbook that is the special criteria in the URB table. The special permit process is not formulaic, and the board has the discretionary power to reject this proposed plan, even if all the special permit criteria are met. The five and a half for Norway spruce forests and wetlands provide critical flood control and heat mitigation for the neighborhood and for the city. Take away these significant trees and wetlands and you take away the last line of defense this neighborhood has against extreme flooding and extreme heat. Our basements will flood more, our streets will be hotter and flood more, and the new homes built on slab foundations will certainly flood. We already have 24% mature tree canopy in Ward 3B, not enough. That's problematic in itself for dealing with all the heat islands that Paige mentioned that we have around us, like downtown Northampton, King Street, the Industrial Park, and Interstate 91. Carolyn's carbon calculator that she mentioned at the June 13th hearing does cannot factor in, from what I can tell, how the significant Norway spruce forest at 8 View Avenue protects North Street area neighbors from extreme flooding and extreme heat, mitigates climate change and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, protects Northampton's air and waterways from pollution, offers portions, uh, uh, offsets portions of the nearby heat islands generated by downtown Northampton, mm -hmm. King Street, the Industrial Park, and Interstate 91, 
and preserves green space in the North Street area neighborhood and protects the neighborhood from turning into a concrete jungle with significantly increased impervious surface area. The city claims they are protecting natural resources in URA districts while infilling URB and URC districts via smart growth polls. This boils down to environmental and social injustice as the city protects some residents from the effects of local climate crises while throwing other residents under the bus. I strongly urge you to protect the neighboring residents, purchase this land, and permanently preserve this significant urban forest and wetlands. Residents offer the city $10,000 toward the permanent preservation of this land. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I see that uh, Meg Robbins has her hand raised. Meg, nope. Okay. Turn on. Do you see anybody else? Sorry, George, you weren't letting me unmute. Now I am. Thank you. Yeah, okay. George. Okay, yeah. go right ahead. This All is right. Ms. Robbins. Yes, thank you. Thank you, George. I appreciate that. Um, I am Meg Robbins, of also of Aldrich Street, and I would like to speak to um, your responsibility as a planning board in thinking about what we heard earlier about after effect. Um, where I live, which is a historical low-lying district, we have had changes in our area. And since you're a neighbor, you're aware of this. Um, most recently, we had some Norway um, pines taken down from Prospect Street. A little bit more in the history, we had a neighbor who had a large yard, which acted as a rain garden, um, who was allowed to build infill on appeal. Since then, our neighbors down the street have had incredible flooding from Prospect Street into their yard, which has resulted in ice in an elderly neighbor's um, driveway, which he's just spent an extraordinary amount of money trying to stonewall up. But in ours, without that rain garden, which would be what would happen in Apeview Avenue, the water is no longer has a place to come down Alder Street. There's no rain garden there. It comes off the roof of the um, infill that was added to that well-meaning owner's house who really was unaware of it but got permission. There is no semi-permeability in the area. It flows down the road and it comes into a lake in front of our house. And most recently this summer, we have had such substantial flooding that has flowed through our entire property, taken out trees, taken out the roots, flown into, fortunately, our neighbors on State Street who do still have a rain garden in geysers behind them, and then, as we all know, ended up in a flood on State Street, which has extended all the way from the New Way House on the corner of Summer Street, which has had serious flooding, because that is not a good place to be able to have any kind of water accumulate, all the way up to um, past the Mayor's House, to, to India House. That's what's going to happen at Eight View. Um, we, we can't look back on it later and say, gosh, it was a bad idea. We have these historical wetlands because the people who lived here before us knew they were not places to build houses. They knew they needed to keep them. They knew they needed the water to absorb them. They didn't anticipate climate change, but we can. We can actually say these are, these are priorities for preserving the forests that we have, the rain gardens that we have. Roofs do not make semi-permeable absorption for the large flooding that we're going to have. And I'm really concerned about our thinking about um, where we're going to put people to live, where they're going to be dealing with that flooding as well. And I'm going to add, incidentally as well, that these buildings strike me not as homes. They strike me as potential Airbnbs, which we've had an increasing number of in Northampton. And I'm wondering who we're building housing for. So I'm going to appeal to you as... Um, as Jackie McCraner just did, which is this is a great opportunity to purchase this plot of land, preserve it forever, keep it as this beautiful, cool, um, non-heat island that will help us through picture Main Street if we if we go down that route and preserving at least some um, absence of heat loss during that project and later on. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mm. Anyone else in the uh, Zoom room who would like to comment at this time? All right. 
All right. Well, I before we go back to public comment, I'd like to just um, turn to the board, see if you have any questions for the applicant or his reps, his or her reps. <clears throat> Doing okay. All right. Okay. Any last comments here in council chambers? Yes, let's think about the housing situation. And I appreciate so much what Again, Robin said. Airbnb. Page Bridges. Page Bridges. Thank you. 12 Northern Avenue. I would like to suggest, this might be a little bit of a radical idea, but as we consider the idea of the city purchasing this land, that we also consider ponying up some money to buy the large house that's for sale on North Street, whereupon we pass it off to Dr. Bossy, where she creates another miracle like she did at 5 Franklin Street, the SRO that serves previously unhoused people. This big house on North Street could do that same work. And she has the will and the ability to make this happen. We need to get that house to her. And we need to address the Airbnb issue. Otherwise, we got to stop talking about housing as if it is something to justify building. We have housing all along North Street, as I said last time. Thank you. Just as a clarification, the city of Northampton does have an ordinance that directly addresses Airbnbs. And if you'd like more information on that, I'm sure you can get it from the planning office or the building inspector. <clears throat> um, any other comments here before we turn back to the board? Um, uh, I, what's my um, I, okay, I want to say we have some housing projects, we should be coming to the issue that comes up when we do have a decent development. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's actually not for this room, but it's for Oh, okay. That was approved on day out, nine small units that serve a similar purpose. So we have some of that. I think my, my call, my wish, my hope is that we just slow things down and you all have tremendous power in this based on the current way that zoning is designed. If I even understand it correctly, we have a lack of checks and balances from this point forward where the people who are living in the neighborhoods have a way to stand up if they learn about it later, as I described, and if concerns arise. Given all of the information that was presented today about the future, and I think what I'm taking away is we are we at Northampton are doing a really good job about thinking about now and about what we need to do to change now in ways that are really meaningful and important. And my request and need, I guess, is to trust that we are thinking about the future in equal conscientiousness. I don't feel confident in that at this point based on what I'm, the way things are happening in my neighborhood. Once this is voted upon today, if I'm understanding correctly, it's happening. Given, and, it, and maybe it should definitely happen, but how it happens, can we have time to figure it out collectively? And I wanna end by understanding that we are part of Strong Towns, Northampton. And in this, the beginning priority is we want to advocate for cities of all sizes to be safe, livable, and inviting. That is not the experience we're having in our local town right now. Something's getting in the way of this. And it also elevates local government as the highest level of collaboration. Collaboration is missing in some parts of the process at this point. We can't serve all needs at all of the time, but we can work together to make sure that we have balance in what we're considering. At, 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 we need checks and balances all along the way to make good decisions for now and the future. Thank you so much for considering. Thank you. All righty. Guess I'll put my voice in the room. <laughs> Come on up. Yeah. So I'm Rosalyn Tory, um, Northern Avenue. And I appreciate everyone's comments. And I feel like I learned about new projects happening in my neighborhood tonight that I wasn't aware of. 
And um, there is a lot of impact as we increase our numbers, um, the neighborhood will have a lot of impact. And so I just want to underscore, I think if we could slow the process down, I'm not sure why it all has to happen at, at the same time, we, we would be able to reflect on what the impacts are. I don't know if that is possible, but I would love to ask for for that process to be looked at differently so that people in the neighborhood could feel like they are part of the discussion and could understand the process better of the environmental concerns versus the city's desire to increase more housing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, last call before we turn it over back to the board. Um, before we think about closing the public comment, we want to make sure that we have a chance to ask the applicant any questions that we might have about the plans. Maybe we could. Um, there were some EPW comments, um, and one of them in particular, a lot of them were about utilities, but um, one in particular was about the trees along View Avenue, um, and they recommended um, a couple of um, approaches. One is um, to use flexipave instead of concrete in the around the tree, under the tree canopy, um, and um, provide specificity about how that would work. The um, they also um, recommended that there may that it would like it would be appropriate to engage a certified arborist to um, determine the best way to create a sidewalk without damage to the trees. So I just um, wanted to put that out there. They certainly flagged that and put some detailed um, uh, product information out about how that could be addressed. And these are not city trees. No, they're not on private, street. right. And did we look at moving the sidewalk to the other side of the street and there wasn't the same availability of land there i you'd have to ask uh, yeah and there's some complications with the other other side of the street all right so the the suggestion that a, a certified arborist look at that for for some different strategies about protecting those trees as a cost that's borne by the developer would you like to say something as you are the 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 tree man yeah. Uh, um, Dave Fenton, 164, 166 North Street. Again, my question, is there even a need for a sidewalk? It's it's a private road. It will remain a private road, I believe, right? You'll still own it. It's a private road. It will be maintained privately. Is there a need for a sidewalk for that 120-foot stretch, whatever it is? Um, I, I, that's my question, I guess, to you folks. You know the rules and the guidelines and, and so forth. So. Uh, do we need a sidewalk? I don't. I don't think we do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, I'll I'll speak for myself and maybe most of the board. Uh, a development like this, um, we firmly believe that sidewalks are necessary for pedestrian safety. We want people to walk more. We don't know how many young children or people who don't have cars or elderly will be coming down there. Well, there won't be the same amount of traffic as on Northern Northern Ave or I'm sorry, not Northern Ave, but um, North Street or Market, but um, we do want to, any kind time we have a development like this, of this number of units, we want to make sure there's a sidewalk for safety. So it is a priority for the city. I have a safety speed limit either. Yep. Yep. So just to um, add to that, the code does require a pedestrian connectivity to the street um, from, um, uh, so it's not just priority, but it's, it's codified. And the um infrastructure needs to be as um specified and comparable to the subdivision regs there may be there's also a shared streets provision within the subdivision rule so i don't know if that's something the board would want to consider see what's the line for that section for that 
for the um, pedestrian connectivity, it's in the site plan um, section um, under uh, 11.6. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's that 350. 11.6. Um, and so I don't know if the applicant can describe also the existing paved width. Um, I didn't see it on the plan spelled out. Yeah. I, um... Yeah, I'd have to scroll in to look specifically, but it's it's within the existing um, right of way that's there now. Obviously, uh, zoom in. I I want to say the roadway width is probably twenty two feet. Is that what that twenty feet? And so let's say twenty feet. So it's a twenty foot wide road. And a five foot sidewalk. And the current um, paved road width is 20 feet? Is roughly 20 feet. It's roughly the same width now, yes. It varies a little bit, but. And is your curbing added to that five foot? Oh, hold your comment, please. Okay. Carolyn, I don't understand your uh, suggestion of the shared street concept. I know that when it comes to bicycles. Um, and a Cerro, but what does that in the subdivision regs are shared? So I was just going to pull that up. Okay. Um, um, but essentially that you, that the paved portion, now the, the probably the complication uh, might be that I think they, this is also used for parking for the abutting residences. Um, so I assume mm. that's going to remain, but that it's a shared space so that um, the, um, Essentially, there's it might be a striped lane, but you're walking in the same space as vehicles. But you'd want to have you'd want to neck down the entry, both entries, um, like you would for a sidewalk. Yep. Yeah. Like so, that's under the board's purview to look at that. I'll pull that up and just read the standard. And in terms of the tree and the arborist, I would assume that the applicant's willing to look into that um, for us. Yep. Great. Uh, are there are questions from the board. So, um, with these trees in your in the existing savings, one of the things that detracts from where a tree is is this tall uh, trees going over the road. How many of those are you going to still be able to see? I, I, in my mind, when you said, I, there, there's I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a handful. I'm trying to see. I mean, there's there's some of these spruces that you can see in the very back. This is looking down. This is from North Street looking down View Avenue. So there's some of you can see some of the spruces in the back behind this house. So those those would go away, um, but we're not. Like the, like the, uh, what was your address? One sixty four. Oh, like so further down on North Street, one fifty. One fifty. There's one of the things that's very beautiful is these all trees that are mm -hmm. uh, and. You know, that's a value monetary, that's a, there's a value to the neighborhood mm -hmm. uh, and having that kind of beauty remain. Uh, is that what we're talking about? What are we, because that's in my, in my head, that's where we're. I mean, it's this cluster here is, okay. is certainly, a, you know, a yes. recognizable. Okay. You know, cluster. Um, you know, there's there's a small one up here as well. The recognizable cluster. Those are the ones that are going to be saved. There's okay. well, there's there's a there's some back here that will be saved. A lot of these are proposed for removal. Okay. Because that's that's the yep. upland portion of the site. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yes. Um. Also, perhaps. Um. I. I think it's important to remind folks that there isn't a prohibition on cutting trees and there isn't a standard saying that 
you know, for an evaluation of just trees in terms of um, impact and stormwater impact. Um, that's why we have the stormwater regulations, but nowhere in the city is there a prohibition against cutting trees. So um, anybody, and it happens regularly, people want more sun on their swimming pools or they want to just clear their yard. And so they are not required to replant trees for those trees that they cut. Um, and so in this scenario, any project that comes before the planning board, applicants are required to provide a replacement based on the calculation that's been adopted by the city council for the size and number of um, trees removed, um, which is not the case for anyone else who just clear cuts their property. Yeah, one of the public comments referenced the recent uh, Eversource clear cutting behind the abandoned Hess gas station by Walgreens. So that was their private property. They came in, they removed them all. Whether they will replace any is highly doubtful. Um, and we had the city had no leg to stand on to ask them to do anything different. So there are situations like that where we're at a loss too. Um, I mean, MassDOT is going and clearing a whole bunch of trees around the Coolidge Bridge, and they do that regularly up and down, yep. uh, you know, within Northampton's jurisdiction as well. And there's nothing that the city can do about that either. And there's nothing they can do about it uh, at single family homes, right? Under Correct. Any circumstances. Right. Yeah. Or in multifamily properties, if the property owner just wants to cut trees. Okay. To the podium one more time, Ms. Myers. Okay. Okay. And then we have other agenda items for sure, but please. I, I just, what you just said though about this is what I, I wasn't going to talk about this, but what a person can do on the property they own that's not in a planning board meeting is different from a planning board making decisions and having discretion about trees. I, I just feel this is a different issue. Okay, so um, I just was wondering, I, we heard that there were eight documents that came before to the um, the site today, to the planning board site. And I'm wondering if the board members had a chance to, just in terms of procedure, had a chance to review those and consider them and discuss them um, so that you're you know, all, it, just curious, just curious, because right. it's like last minute. We haven't seen them, yep. obviously, and I know um, the presenter tried to explain some things, but just yep. very last minute, it makes it harder for a public hearing to because we don't know about these things. Or I can't speak for the other board members, but I was able to review them, and a lot of the information in those was material that we had already seen before, but written by a different author or written in a different way, perhaps more extensive. Um, references and research, and maybe one of the other doc documents reference was from the Department of Public Works. Um, they're very kind of specific technical uh, responses to the plan as presented. So, yeah. um, yes, they no were. We did. We were notified of those. We were notified of all of the letters that came in before then. Um, and it is a difficult process. The board can't always just continue meetings. Um, because somebody presents new information at the last minute, it's it's very difficult for us to kind of help the developer move through a process to help the community move through a process. Right. So it's hard for the community to be able to, yes, as you could understand to sure. Okay, okay thanks. Thank you. Um, related to that, I just wanted to clarify. So there, um, and um, Jacqueline McCreener mentioned this that she had submitted a petition. So the board and none of the land use regulations anywhere are based on how many people um, sign on to a concept or a um, concern. So the board has to review the permit and the application based on what's presented in front of them um, and match it up with the rules and regulations. So any kind of petition doesn't mean those issues carry more weight. It just is that that those number of people also have that same perspective. Um, so I just wanted to um, highlight that piece. Okay. Um, George, can I say something? Please. Um, there were some comments raised about 
process and voice in the process? Can we slow down this process to think about the impacts and so forth? Um, firstly, I want to say that there are at least two uh, residents of Ward 3B who are on the board. So we are actually thinking about what's happening in, because it's our neighborhood too. Um, the planning and zoning regulations that are in the city are not designed around a single project, nor can they be stopped in the course of a single project. So I hear very much the concerns that you all have. And regardless of what happens with this individual project, I would urge you if you want to see changes and understand better infill and want to be have more voice in the process, that those conversations don't happen. We can't change policy here today because we don't like this particular project that's here. Uh, zoning regulations are proposed by the, the planning office. They come here for our review and then they go to city council for final adoption. So if you want to be a part of sort of changing the planning and zoning landscape in Northampton, the best way to do that is to get involved in that process outside of an individual project. I get that doesn't help you with your concerns today, but absolutely we want your voice. And there was recently a group of residents who came forward to make a petition proposed change to the zoning in the city, and it ultimately was adopted by city council. So there absolutely are mechanisms in place, um, but we can't trigger those midstream. So I just, regardless of what happens today, want to just urge all of you to stay involved, make your voices heard, it's much harder to do that in the abstract, to think about how might this actually happen in my backyard, but that's actually the best time to, to make changes. I'm off my soapbox now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, before we look at closing the public hearing, any last questions for the applicant? Jeff McLean, representing Okay. All right, we recognize Jacqueline in the hybrid room, in the Zoom room. Thank you very much. Um, I do want to respond to what I believe it was Jana who was just speaking. What, what, um, whoever that person is, it's hard to see out in Zoom world, but I think that's who it is. Uh, the board can say no to this project. You have the discretionary power to say no to this project based on the special permit process. If you're not aware of that, I would really like you to be aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do you want to entertain a motion to close public sure. hearing? Okay, I'll move that we close public hearing. I second. Motion's been made. By Melissa, seconded by Sam Taylor to close the public hearing. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, close in the public hearing. Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Um, last comments, questions, board. Maybe we could review any conditions that would be attached to a motion to um, approve or deny the permit, um, which are? Which are? I think a lot of them have been resolved by the applicant and the DPW, but I know that prior to a CO, traffic mitigation, the amount of $11,000 to be made to address the zoning requirement for incremental increase in trips generated by the new use. Proof that tree replacement in accordance with the ordinance has been completed and certification that the lighting install complies with the zoning and plans. Those are all prior to the um, issuance of a certificate of occupancy. And I have a, a couple of more based on both the conversation here and Department of Public Works um, that sort of the standard condition of having pre-construction um, plans submitted 15 days ahead of building permit or you know site disturbance, but those plan sheets should include updates um, on if you feel it's appropriate, the recommendation would be to um, about the, the concrete sidewalk. And I don't know if you still want to have a conversation about that, 
but um, the details um, for tree protection for those um, trees that will be protected, and then a detail on the flexi pave material. Um, uh, also, there are issues related to um, crossing encasements because the water line and sewer lines cross um, on the property without the adequate separation. So you have to do extra um, um, construction um, reinforcement basically for that. Um, and I'm sorry, so a, a detail like that is the plan, the revised plan right. sheets. Okay. And then also in the revised plan sheets, um, mm -mm. Um, confirming the size of the water main that's going to connect out to North Street um, that should be an eight inch line gate valves <laughs> and um, a detail of the water service connections and also sewer ejector pump and pump size calculations. Um, and then the other and then you talked about certification by the arborist about those trees. Um, and then tree protection yes needs tree to... protection prior to um and then the so, um there still is um and this is mostly this is all department of public works because it's the it has to do with the water line and water line connectivity so the applicant really no matter what has to comply with the dpw design standards for that um but there's just a condition about that that those final um, designs have to be uh, reviewed and approved by DPW. That needs to be a condition? Um, they have asked it to be a condition. Okay. Good. And I'm sure the language is it has to be uh, reviewed and approved by the DPW prior to a shovel in the ground? Um, no, that's just overall the design has to be approved. So... Um, so board, there was that question about the sidewalk and the two trees in the abutters property. Um, do we want to, um, entertain the notion of just striping the street and having that provide pedestrians safety? Do we want to ask the applicant to work hard with an arborist to figure out a way to install the concrete sidewalk without hopefully jeopardizing the trees. I mean, the other thing you could think about is it is the standard is a five foot sidewalk. If you wanted to go to four, that still meets accessibility. Um, and it's not, you know, an urban site. I mean, it is yeah. serving this neighborhood. So that could give an, a more space. So instead of a five foot wide sidewalk, you could, you know, uh, approve a narrower sidewalk in addition to the flex the pave. Mm -hmm. well, I, th I think they should, I think they should work with with the arborist um, and uh, I mean it doesn't make sense to to stop the project based uh, I mean I, I want to I my personal feeling is I would like to protect the the trees a little bit more. Um, Thank you, Nate. Um, you're distracting. <laughs> um, uh, but the striping, I think, should just be a back a backup, and that they should try to try to do uh, a you know work with an arborist. You know, five being the goal for being okay and three being we can't yeah. do anything yeah. else yeah. And i don't know how to make sure that that comes back to us so that we i mean i guess that's just to that's up to Kellen to, to work those things out yeah yeah so if if i might to, to say that i think sam if the arborist works with the uh uh, assesses the trees and comes out with a declaration that any work along those trees is going to be injurious to them. Then we come back to the striping idea. Yeah, that would that would be yep. my that would be my. Yep. And there's also this alternative material. Yeah, yeah, I think right. in addition to in that, addition that, that to no matter what, I, 
exhaust yeah. those options before right. we went right. to the street. I mean, I think your point is it's pretty compelling that we want to encourage sidewalks yeah. where we can. Yeah. So is it, um, so let me just make sure I understand. So um, you're saying five feet, four feet, or? I'm okay with four feet. That gives the, the route a little bit more. Not may not be enough, but it gives it a little bit more, and it certainly meets ADA requirements. And then they could come back, not as a full amendment, but come right. back to the board right. with an alternative if the arborist determines that um, even that would have right. an impact, no matter whether you do air spading or what have you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good morning okay to that. I mean, my personal view is I, I think this is actually a great info project and, uh, you know, just basic cal calculations are that there's, you're going to increase the city taxes by about $110,000. That's a teacher plus we're talking about laying off teachers in our, in our city. And that's, you know, the, there's trade-offs with everything. And uh, the idea that somehow uh, these uh, these trees are worth that does not make sense to me. Anyone else? You know, and I, I guess I would also add that this we are not um, impacting the wetlands. We still have to go through the CONSCOM committee, and they will kind of put their... Um, expertise see how those are safeguarded there's still a um, a majority of the the area is still preserved for uh wetland absorption for tree canopy um and it will add a component of housing in an area that is close to the downtown um and it's not the only part of town where this is being experienced we've been through this in the other side of ward three up in bay state we're seeing it in Florence. Um, we live in a desirable town. People want housing. I don't think we want to <laughs> limit that. Um, so here's my soapbox. And Rick, Rich. Um, I, because I'm I'm so unfamiliar with the ordinance and. Working on it, but I'm not there yet. It's going to take a while. Uh, there was a comment. Oh, well, you opened the the meeting on this topic by explaining that we are considering both the site plan and the permit. Um, and one of the comments you pointed out that you could deny a special permit if you chose to. What are the considerations? What are the basics for that? Sure. Yeah, so point me to the uh, is there a list of like, yes, yeah, so in the yes, yeah, so the links that were provided. So, site plan is t generally considered more of a technical permit, and you can turn down a site plan if the applicant is not meeting the technical standards. So, um, water and sewer connectivity, street connection, sidewalks, wood, whatever that may be, maybe the access is not appropriate. It's going to create an issue for the network. Um, special permit is discretionary, um, more discretionary in that if you feel that it's um, not um, in the um, interest of the city, it doesn't meet the city plans, that you have the discretion to turn it down. It's not, it's a little bit less on technical details than um, not meeting those six criteria in the special permit section. However, there are um, certain special permits identified in the zoning ordinance that have very specific criteria. It's not just um, how more units than seven. Um, and then there are some special permits that don't have any particular criteria. And so there's really much more heavily heavy weight on, is this use appropriate in this location? And so, yes, under, you know, you're evaluating whether more than seven, more than six units in the urban residential B district is appropriate because that's the trigger. Building more than six units in the urban residential B district 
automatically requires a special permit because city council decided that that would at least be a threshold. But during that process, the city council um, worked on very specific criteria. Well, what would be appropriate to grant a special permit? And so that's why you have A through E or F now of the special permit criteria, specifically about more than seven units. So, you know, the units uh, percentage have to be either affordable, dedicated affordable housing, or less than um, 1,200 square feet. Um, the All the units have to be sort of treated equally. There has to be this um, parklet space, um, and it's based on per square foot. Um, the design criteria for the units, how they're oriented to the street, the fact that you have sidewalk connectivity and all that stuff. Those are very specific. And what I did say was cookbook criteria because the whole point was to say, okay, the city understands and knows and needs housing. How do we want that housing to look? How do we want it to function? Let's write it down so everyone knows, the public knows, the developers know, and so that there is a path forward and people can understand that it's not just an arbitrary special permit. On this day, the planning board felt like they wanted to approve it. On this other day, they decided not to. So that's what that specificity is about. Yes, it's still discretionary, but these are the components that you consider in determining that discretionary that permit. That's in, yes, that's in the urban residential B table. Um, and so at the top of the code, there's an attachment for the URB table and I can read those. Um, just give me the citation. Yeah, so it's attachment seven, I believe. Let me just double check, um, sorry. Yeah, it's the, um, if you have, yeah, I'm just want to. So at the very top of the zoning code, there's uh, all the PDF files, and you want to look at URB, which is, um, oh, sorry, here. And you can't, it's not easy to search or anything. Okay. I, what, so, um, what the, Carolyn does with the agenda, Rich, is she, if you have that available, she makes hot links to specific parts, and you can click right on that to go to the site plan criteria or to the special permit. So, the special permit list is at the very bottom of that PDF file. So, it's um, A through F. So, A is about buildings and parking, and sort of talking about the orientation of the buildings and parking as it relates to the street. This is a unique project or property because it has a private little strip that is a private road um, and talks about the streets and road, roadway. So, it's all about design and making sure that these new projects that are fitting into areas in neighborhoods that didn't previously have homes fit into that context. Um, and then the park space we talked about uh, is about environment and energy. So HERS ratings, these are a little bit outdated now that our stretch opt-in energy stretch code has advanced well beyond 2013 when we adopted this. Um, and the size and access and affordability um, criteria. So 11% of the units have to be either affordable or um, units 25% of 1,200 square feet um, or smaller. And then interact internet access and connectivity. And those things relate to, you know, want, not wanting to, if you have affordable units or smaller units that you don't want, um, folks to be treated differently just because they're an affordable unit or a smaller unit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Carolyn. Other questions, other comments? Okay. Might be time to make a motion. Um, I think we've been through everything. I think we've heard a lot of good comments from the, um, the audience, both here and on Zoom. Um, yeah, I think the applicant has heard them all too. Appreciate their willingness to meet with their neighbors and work through things. Okay, I have it up here. So I will uh, make a motion to approve the site plan and special permit by sovereign builders for development of 12 units on a parcel of eight view Ave, map by D 25C-1217. 
permit LU 2411 uh, with the conditions that we have listed and discussed both from you and from Carolyn. Second. Okay, motion has been made by Melissa, seconded by Sam Taylor. Any discussion? Um, I'll just say that I, I we can sometimes separate out the site plan and the special permit for different votes, but I think in this time we're just collapsing them both into the same into the same motion. All right. So hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion. Okay. Um, unanimous. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you. Oops. We give you six more months. Whoa. I needed 12 months. But a little break. Uh, the planning board will adjourn for uh, five to 10 minutes. Okay. And then we'll come back for our second public hearing. Thank you, patient. We're coming. That was crazy. Hey, just so you know, we're not cutting down any trees. <laughs> <laughs> We're just paving everything. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, my good Lord. Are you building a concrete house? Yeah. <laughs> you read the article and then you heard her? Oh, oh boy. my goodness. Oh, it's in the one of the most recent thing about her. George, have you read this? But, oh, oh, you are? It's a, this so oh, so, had to so be how many, how had many to be acres is this whole houses. thing that you guys just talked about tonight? The property is like five, five acres, but popular yeah, architecture yeah. and historic preservation, and it's it's oh, massive. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, well, you can build that in a house. Oh, is it similar to like off of of um, Florence Road? They have that little community on Bird's Pet. It's no, I mean it's going to be like individual houses. Yeah, not like a, a off of housing. off of but Florence Road, they have. Um, what do they have? Some it's like a little community where they have every, all oh, that's been in there for years. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been there forever. All yeah, the backyards and that. No, this is this is something this different. Is different. Yeah, it's just like small, small individual. Houses. Everybody wants the tiny on Bird's Pit. Yeah, like yeah. the yeah. last five years or so. Oh, on Bird's Pit. So there's a newer one on Bird's Pit. Like oh, the last oh, five. Oh, years. up by Emerson, up by past Emerson yeah. Way on the right. They just yeah. threw in a bunch of little like houses there. A section of the bike path. Yeah. Those are habitat houses. Oh, yes. We, we Everybody wants those tiny houses. Well, that's clean. How many did you say they wanted to build in there? That's it? Oh. Well, well, wait. Okay, they're gone. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I they were, and it, hill, there's 200 up no, there. No, I thought they were putting in like you know? cond, like huge condo structures because like, we came in Yeah, I was sort of a beloved little so, wooded area. Yeah, but it, I mean, I get both sides. I learned a yeah. lot about trees and such. And I'm yeah. thinking, just give the man 40 grand for his two trees in the front yard. I'm, like, oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's so so how, much, my backyard, how much would it cost? I mean, oh, it's already been done, but they said, well, have the city buy it. I mean, where, where does the, you obviously get grants and people donate Three money. Dollars. And yeah, I have no idea. I mean, you probably look online at how much he purchased the whole property for. Um, and I'm sure he's put in. Oh, yeah. Know, engineering and all kinds of things. They're, they're pretty far along in the process. So huh. um, so how long has that whole, this whole thing been going on for this? 
I mean, this is the second planning board meeting, um, but I don't, I think he bought it last year and he's been working yeah. on it. So, um, but he's been, you know, he has to go through the conservation yeah. commission. And so yeah. All the other yeah. Plans. Yeah. Well, I have so to say, you, the whole process you, has been seamless. The I people mean, that were really. here sitting here, do they know where you live? <laughs> you, you need to get a cop escort or something. <laughs> hey, should we follow you home? <laughs> yeah. You want to get a room at the hotel tonight? I'll challenge you in the neighborhood lately. So. But you excused yourself from the meeting. I mean, I know. They what can, can you do? That. It's hard. Yeah. No, I think like, I mean, I wrote a letter. I'm not, I'm not against it. I'm not thrilled to have construction of my back. Sure. But, yes, you know. I like whoever I couldn't see the other lady sitting right this there white. where she's huh? This white. This white. Oh yeah. Like, where she said if you want to get involved, you gotta get into the process okay. build, 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 build it. You know where people that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey. yeah right thank you good yeah. Yeah. you back up out there? Uh, yeah I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah oh, good it's a I I should I mean he didn't want to escalate this but he was drunk. Well, just one person, or yeah, it was oh, okay. I thought it was a whole group. No, yeah. it was one guy. He was, oh, wow. was stuck here in the hill. Somebody was trying to help him out, but that actually made him more angry. So like, he see him. He was he in the hole. Pulled out. out. He pulled out. Oh, oh, oh that's terrible. And then, yeah, we're gonna and then he was very drunk. And then yeah. he said, like, you know, don't call the police. I'm gonna like, punch you. And, oh. like, yeah. and then so I'm like, okay, just leave them. You know? oh, sorry, my na neighbor yeah. Dave is was sitting right behind me. Works for the Sheriff's office, and I was like, I think he's gone. Well, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if he did, but there was a guy named AJ. I, I feel like I've seen some. He was helping. Oh, good. He was no. helping. Yeah. Wow. He was helping. Uh, so he said that's why you like, didn't know him. And <laughs> like, I'm not funny. Just, I know. It's like I have a cartoon brain, so it doesn't take much. So, <laughs> Where do you go around here to get that plastered? No, I don't. It's a fight. That's early. I keep looking out like I'm sitting in my car. Oh, that's unfortunate. I thought, did you say my name? Or I thought you said my name. I think you said, are you okay, Nate, on your way out or something? Oh, oh, oh. I'm sure you were good when you came back in. So you're 10, right? I'm 10, yeah. Yeah, I remember meeting at that. Yeah. Yeah, you have a a styled hair today. I, I, I do. Can be yeah. got it. Or a hat. Oh, no. Or a hat. no. When when you came to pick up the yellow sign, I think your hair wasn't like. Um, I was out of control awesome. until until she cut it. Oh, I was seriously yeah. it was bad. I'm not a hairdresser. Great. I went to great. law school. This is. Well, it looks great. No, it looks great. Oh, oh. You're very kind. No, you should no. see it on a windy day. <laughs> you scared the dogs. <laughs> We had some my girls, my my uh, my daughter had some friends at the house, and I I came in all my hair was this was before it was cut. I went upstairs, and took a shower, came back downstairs, was combed. She goes, I thought you were a different person. Up here. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, it's uh sometimes these things take a long time. So you're delayed, right? You what, what were your schedule for seven forty? <laughs> oh man, okay. you just you. What time do you guys close out tonight? Nine. I I think I mean, ours will literally take on, like five minutes. I thought it goes on the ten sometimes. Oh, right? later. Wow. So it's, yeah, she doesn't. You know, Carolyn doesn't try to schedule like too many. Sure, sure, sure. But sometimes when you got too many. Yeah, then you're here forever. There is a and that's sort of a state deadline. You know, you got sixty five days. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Here. So gotcha. You know, you know sometimes you know, applicant asks for extensions. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Tim Scrappy. Hi. Nice I'm to meet you. It's my wife. Caroline. Nice to meet you, Caroline. And this is Caroline Ignier. She's Hi. owner of the property. Oh, okay. Or part owner. I'm yeah, assuming. my husband. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so if you want to go ahead and load up while we're. I, I didn't bring anything to load up. Okay. <laughs> so. This is, right. He's still I, very, you okay. know, yeah. I'm uh, assuming it, everybody's got the paperwork that we gave yeah. you. Yeah. So, so if anybody's still left in Zoom world, I can probably go on to the. Sorry about that. No, I'm not a computer okay. person. <laughs> okay. Um, that's fine. There probably won't be anybody. I don't really want to see any of your neighbors here. <laughs> no. So. It's the guy that was drunk and fell over by the window. Oh, yeah. He was really not happy with this house. He wants to live in it. It's the problem. <laughs> Far out, though. I know, right? Yeah, there's not really a bike trail. Uh, uh, <laughs> I never know. All right. Sam, I'll take it. Sam left me feeling. Uh, we, 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 we don't have a, 
for this side. Just give an overview of what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, they all yeah. got everything. Yeah. So I feel like this is pretty good. Well, she's a good now. I'm going to ask questions. Yeah. 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 Thanks. All righty, everyone. Good evening again. We're reopening our planning board meeting of July 25th. Just to note that one planning board member had to leave. Um, and we've been joined by another plan, planning board meeting, Stacy, who had recused herself during the last hearing. So we're back at a, a full quorum of five members. Um, so at this point, I would like to uh, open a meeting plan for 7.40 p.m. for a site plan review to build a detached, nope, yep, to be, to. This is true at, at uh, 57 Woodland Drive, a detached pool house by accident building and remodeling. Correct. Map ID 42157, permit LU-24-21. And this is a site plan review only. Um, and it, it needs a, a vote of four or seven members to approve it. And the applicable code is 150-11.6, uh, our site plan criteria. So is there a presentation? I can start. Please do. Okay. So I'm I'm Tim Scrocky. I own Accent Building and Remodeling. Uh, this is my wife, and this is April Igneri. She's her and her husband own the property at 57 Woodland, and uh, we're pro proposing to build a pool house. They already have a beautiful in-ground pool uh, on their property already, but they would uh, like to be able to have this pool house to be able to entertain with their children. Um, they her husband's a cook and a chef so they want to be able to have a kitchen in there uh so we're proposing to do a, a kitchen or whatever the the plan is there there will be a bathroom uh on the on the property uh, or at the pool house uh everything will be connected to uh the the sewer to to the house the water's coming from the house um there's a gas uh propane tank right in the in the yard so the, there'll be cooking will be done by uh propane uh, there will not be any water runoff to uh, the properties on the side. There's there's multiple feet from where the pool house is being proposed to the next uh, property owner. Uh, there will definitely be no water runoff down to the road because it's it's uphill and wherever the water is going to go, it, it will basically never ever reach the road. Uh, so there won't be any soil in, into the road down at Woodland Drive, except for you know whatever equipment might be there but we'll make sure everything's cleaned up that way. Um, but there was just based on the, the previous thing that we just listened to, there's no trees gonna be cut down on the property. The, uh, Carolyn emailed me the other day about trees and I said, no, there's no trees. There'll be some trimming. There's some scrub trees that just grown up against the property line like that, that will be trimmed, but we're, we're not planning on cutting any of the existing trees that are there. There's, there's plenty of room for the property. And I think somebody was there from the planning board it was yesterday, right? A couple, of days. A couple of days ago. I'm not sure which, which member was there. Uh, the homeowner saw somebody walking around the property and was wondering who it was. And they said it was from the planning board. So. I introduced myself to your husband. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, so, so really? hopefully you were able to, hopefully you were able to see where basically the pool house is going to go, you know, yep. next, next to uh, the existing pool and, and this and that. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if you have anything to say, April, or, or if you have any questions for us or. I mean, I don't have anything really to say unless you have questions for me about it. So it may come up. Is there any, I, you know, the only drawing that I found that was helpful was a site plan of the locust. And even that wasn't really helpful. Mm -hmm. Is there all the, there were just, wasn't much. There's, there wasn't much. There's only hand drawn. Yes. Right. Um, it, it, we, we, plan, right? 
Um, I saw the fuller plan, yeah, but not the site plan. Oh, yeah, yeah. site plan. Yeah. Um, we, so we were, sorry. We, we asked if we had to have it uh, done by a surveyor or we um, could just hand draw it. And yep. we got an email back saying, no, you can just hand draw it in. So we went back in there, my son and I, we went back in there and took all the measurements from the surveyed property line, you know, with 150 foot tape measure. And that's probably the one that you had. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. And then just to clarify, this is not, so it's coming, it's being permitted as a second unit because kitchen and bathing facilities automatically are a trigger for a unit. So that's, even though this is a pool house, because it has those components, um, it had to come in as a detached um, a, um, second unit. Right. But because of that, is it precluded further like consideration of the like that? No, so they could they could have people stay there if they want. Yeah. Yep. You have another unit that's saying. But that would be, I mean, oh, a third unit. Okay. No, they couldn't have a third unit. Okay. This stands for the second unit, right? I'm just curious, is there an issue with the gas moratorium or not? Because it's already I think it's propane. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. there's a there's a tank set. It's like, wait a second. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we don't have an issue with propane for a new new structure as opposed to electric. Um I'm sorry. Yes, that's a good question. He is trying to move towards all new structures having not fossil fuels at all, but uh, uh, electrical, even though we know that the electrical system is. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't think about because it's not heated, right? It's a seasonal space. It's seasonal. That's why I didn't pick it up. But um, um, right. So what you could say is for um, heating. Um, if there is a heating unit installed, it has to be all electric. Okay, but the chef can have a gas grill. Yeah. Propane, yeah. just for cooking. Yeah. 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 Not gas. Propane. Yeah, it would be like a like a grill, right? Like, yeah. Like in, in have like a stove or like an oven. I mean, at, at this time, but you yeah. know, part of our concern is down the road, ten or fifteen years from now, the next homeowner comes in and. They may do any number of things. Sure. Unit then. Yeah. So you could just note that as a condition that okay. if any, um, you know, to make it a fully, you know, yep. four season use with heating, it needs to be electric. Um, like a mini split or something. Right. Yep. Where the location of the, the we'll call it the, the second structure is, there's a, a big drop off. Yep. Right down there. Um, and I'm not sure, I, I, again, I couldn't tell how close the footprint was to that drop-off and what you were doing about, and I don't know how far your property goes in terms of that drop-off, but if it'll be shedding water into any neighbor's yard or... The majority of the property that we own is to the right of the house where the pool house is, so it goes almost halfway to 66 Okay. into the woods. That's like okay. really the only woods we own. Right okay. There. So what was your name? Oh, yeah. So if you if you look at what we drew right here, the closest boundary was 42 feet away okay. right there. And then the, the back of the pool house to the property line was 127 feet away. OK, yeah, I'm more concerned about the the how you're going to deal with the water setting off the roof and making sure that it wasn't going to cause any issues because of the drop off there. Yeah, I think to me, when I looked at the site last year and stuff, it looks like somebody just, whoever cleared the lot, they kind of maybe took dirt out of there and then they just threw some excess debris from like trees and you can correct there me. There actually car parts, like whole cars there when we moved in. Whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah. the pool, the back, the back of the pool house does go up to there. It's not in that area. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. But. If water ran off, I'm trying to think the way the roof go goes, if water ran off of it, it would, one side would basically go into that little bit of a ditch or gully. The rest of it would head towards Woodland, the road, the main road, but it would never, never, ever reach the road, the water runoff. Good. Um, and you're familiar with our new lighting ordinances? 
you might want to look at them and you and the electrician. Okay. Okay. Um, pretty specific about what you can do with outdoor lighting, even though you're in a quiet neighborhood, you're not commercial. It's still exterior or interior, ex more exterior. Okay. And, you From know, the light exterior. Yeah. lighting of the pool or, um, Barbecue parties, things of that nature. Yep. I want to be careful. I think my electrician just had proposed a couple small floodlights on the front of that facing the pool. Which but, faces our house. Which faces their house, but nothing, nothing in the back except for we wanted to put a, a an outdoor shower in. And I talked to the building department uh, about that. It just needs a roof structure over it so that water can't just, it has to be tied into the sewer and it has to have a, a a roof over it based on the city ordinance uh, for outdoor showers. And they said that was fine as long as there was a roof over it. Um, and the outdoor showers, not really to take shower showers. It's if you wanted to come out of the pool or something, you wanted to just, you know, rinse off and stuff like that. But still, I need to be ready to me. Yep. Oops. Yep. Okay. I don't know. I was I was an electrician, and I didn't keep up with all the new codes. So I hopefully oh, yours is more of a quality thing. <laughs> so um, I'm sure my electrician. He works in Northampton a lot for construct and different guys like that. I'm sure he knows what the situation is with that. It, it's in the uh, water. What we call the water said protection district supply. water supply. Which and I'm not. I meant to look at those um, kind of criteria again. The biggest one I remember is about the use of pesticides on the lawn and fertilizers, things like that. Is there anything else we need to be aware of? Not relative to this structure. It's it, um, there. There would be a concern if there was, um, you know, a drain in a garage that was not, you know, just sort of disappearing, <laughs> or storage of um, large amounts of fertilizer or chemicals or gas and oil yeah. yeah so pool chemicals things like that but there's a limit i think of residential yeah. pool chemicals and that... the pool is already there so yep. yeah where was it it's in water supply, water supply district uh application for? i think probably in the application yeah okay i, I just want to know where to look for this yeah yeah Um, other questions from the board? I move to close public comment. Well, I don't think we opened it. Oh, it's... you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just assumed they didn't have anything. Sorry, right, sorry. Is there anyone here in council chambers who would like to speak in favor or opposed to this application? All right, hearing none, is there anyone in our Zoom audience who would like to comment on this application? Don't see any. Don't see any. Okay. I now move that we close public comment. <laughs> okay. Moved by Jana White, seconded by Melissa. Um, any discussion? We're we're good with our questions to the applicants. And yeah. okay. Um, all those in favor of closing the public comment, unanimous. Okay. Seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, I think we have a condition to waive traffic mitigation yep it's pretty yeah, straightforward to me and then electric all electric and for any heat that's added. any any heat okay. any heat will be all electric and you have to conform to our new electrical codes our new outdoor lighting codes and that would just be approved by the electrical uh, inspector at the building department at the, yeah yeah. And when he comes by to do the final inspection, yep. he'll check the fixtures and yeah. make sure that they're appropriate. Do we need to ask to... that as a condition or is that no, it's not really standard? Because it's, yeah. Good. Good. Oh, okay. The motion's been made. No, it hasn't. Has the motion been made? No. No. Well, again, we're up here. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any other discussion? Any questions? Any comments? Okay. Thanks for. Reframing those two conditions. All right, I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> I move to approve the, um, let's make sure we got another one right behind it. So uh, to uh, approve the site plan review to build a detached pool house 
by accent building and remodeling at 57 Woodland Drive, Florence, map ID 42157 with the two conditions discussed, um, waiving the traffic mitigation. And um, if there's any heating at any time, it has to be electric. I second. Great. Motion's been made by Melissa, seconded by Jana. Any question, any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For your project. So am I good to go to the building department and, and do a permit or how does this? There's an appeal period. Okay. So as soon as we get the decision to the clerk, it might, it's going to take a couple of days. That's fine. Then um, you'll get notified and then that starts the 20 day appeal period. Okay. And so you can pull a permit after that. Um, um, at that point, you pick up the decision and then you can go to the building department. That's fine. And then how long do we leave the sign up? Oh, can you bring the sign back? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. We could... We're running low. So we... Are you? Yes. <laughs> um, can we bring it back like Monday or something? Or... Absolutely. That would be great. I'll just drop. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Yes. What time do you open tomorrow? Um, 8.30. I might be tomorrow, okay. but okay. otherwise Monday for sure. Okay. Thank you all for Thanks. your help. So Thank you. Thank Have you. a good night. <laughs> You're up next. We're like, we have one left. Thank you. We have one left. Thank you for your help. Thank you. We'll bring the sign back together. Thank you. Yeah. And um, View Avenue. Oh, we, we got to get that one back too. <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you find this lot? I just, and it's a janky, I oops, the uh, USB drive here. Yeah. Okay. Who's left here? C. John Hansdell, Sam Wiley. Who's read AI meeting? Zoom. The Zoom, another Zoom control. It's so, ready? Yes, let's do it. Okay, so at this point, we'd like to open up uh, a site plan review advertised for 7.55 p.m. to build a second detached dwelling by back. Yard ADUs at 35 Bliss Street, Florence Map ID 22D 083. And this site plan review needs a simple majority vote of four of our seven members. Um, and we have a presentation. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you want me to share my screen? Yes. Yes. You guys have those materials and I'll be I'll share my screen. And if you have any questions, we we can go. And if you help us by identifying yourself. Yes. My name is Tim O'Reilly. Um I work for Backyard Day to Use. I am also a Northampton resident. Um we have another project here. We've done several of these in town. Um homeowner uh, is figuring out an option for her aging mother. Um, we're going to zone or permit this under the, you know, two single family homes by right, allowing mom to live um, in her daughter's backyard and be close to her grandchildren. So that's the, the intent here. Um, laid out in front of you is that, you know, all our zoning compliance for 356-611. Um, I won't bore you guys with that. It's fairly straightforward. We are in the WSP district, the same as the previous one here. Um, we're meeting all applicable setbacks um, and standards, all new construction, electric, mini splits, um, meeting all the requirements for, for the city. A um, couple unique things on this. Um, we are building an integrated um, garage here. So um, and complying with the WSP standards, we are set back from the road, um, broken up the facade there as well. Um, and then the interesting thing about this property in the WSP here on Bliss Street, um, the only section of sidewalk on Bliss Street uh, is in front of their house. Right. Um, it's a bazaar. I, I don't know how many of you were there, pulled it up on Google Street View. So there's a sidewalk basically from their driveway that goes not even all the way down their property. Um, and their driveway is off of that. And then they do have a second curb cut there. I can go share my screen here. Let's go over to that one. 
Oops. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. So as part of our application here, um, you know, designing for aging in place for the elderly mother, mother, a garage was important, especially for our winter months here. So what we are proposing here, um, we know that per, per the order and it's in town, quote it for you to sound smart, uh, you know, 8.8 .8 parking load, load space standards. Um, we have two existing curb cuts. So one is pre-existing non-conforming. What we are proposing as part of this project is not to increase beyond the two that are existing, but to abandon the one that is sort of in the middle of the property, um, return that to pervious lawn area, meet all the DPW standards, um, and move that approximately um, 40 feet, 50 feet, um, a little bit down Bliss Street, and that will serve as the access for the elderly homeowner um, into her, her house and her garage. So, uh, All right, so you are proposing to still have two curb cuts, but you're moving one of them? Correct. Okay. Yep. So, so two exist. One is pre-existing non-conforming. We are not going above two. Um, we are proposing just to move that second curb cut. Oh, that is everything. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, I, I mean, I'd be happy to go over all of the details here. Um, um, so yeah, just just for the board's sake, even though it's, um, I mean, in terms of the two driveways, it, it, is this a is this a waiver that we're allowing? Because even though there was one grandfather, then that's disappearing. So we're actually well. They're essentially moving it, so you could approve it as part of this site plan. It needs a permit. Even if it were never there, it would need a permit from the planning right. board. Right. So, um, so I think, um, you know, internally we looked at this pretty, um, tried to figure out if there was a way to consolidate it, but given the layout of the property, there wasn't a way to sort of fork off, you know, access into that garage. Um, we looked also a long. It's a long, um, longer lot. Right. So effectively, it presents as sort of a rhythm along the street with a house driveway, right. house driveway. Um, but yes, I mean, that's part of the review of the plan. And, and I think we're going to see more and more of this as we permit second units on lots, people asking to have a, a driveway, another driveway added. And we've done that a couple of times. So it is going to get a little creative for us um you're right but in this situation they couldn't share that driveway they couldn't wind right. it up okay um yeah no, logistically um there is enough parking on site with the existing driveway and garage to meet the requirements it's sort of that logistics piece of how to, how do we actually actually serve the unit yeah so, and, and, and there's there's parking on bliss street uh, at least on one side, I didn't notice any no parking signs. Um, it's it's not a crazy busy street, but it is kind of a cut through for folks. At Thoroughfare, the that, absolutely. Yeah, to get yep. get to that part of Florence. Um, so, but given the uh, the amount of traffic out of this small unit, um, uh, it, it shouldn't be an issue having that second curb cut to to this guy's eyes. Um, Um, you're not removing any trees. There was a big tree removed in the corner, but that was probably a couple of years ago before they Correct. decided about this project. That was not part of our scope. So they yeah. hired an arborist and did, this was like a, it was a white pine. Yeah. So they had the yeah. whole crane thing, but that wasn't part uh, of our scope. Okay. Because sometimes we look at that also, somebody do, that goes in and removes trees that might be, might have been part of a project. And especially if it's a major tree like that, we would want it to be replaced. But we, within 12 months, you have 12. Yeah. Months. So we don't. Do you know when that? I don't. I don't. I could talk to our client. That didn't come up at all. So you knew that? You just happened to know that? That's, tree what, was these, that's what these site visits are all about. 
There's a oh, huge, you saw a stump. A huge stump there right in the corner that if I wanted to build a house in that lot, I probably wouldn't want that white blind thing. But it looked like it was done much uh, more than a year ago. That's my assumption. But I just wanted to make sure that people, we, we've run into that before where somebody clear cuts a lot of land and then they come in and say, oh, I'm going to build here. And so, um, see, it's actually still noted here on the plan, mm -hmm. right at that corner lot line. That's the white pine that is now a stump. It's not, even though it's not today. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and the, at the front? At the front, right, right. Okay. Just yeah. south of the curb cut, the new curb cut. Yeah. Um, Okie doke. Uh, I, 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 are they suggesting any tree plantings along the street, Bliss Street? We're not asking for a sidewalk because that is a real anomaly there. But yeah, um, um, they have some existing plantings there that will be impacted by construction. Um, yeah. We're always keeping that in mind of, hey, where can we move things? Yeah. We have some hydrangeas and other things. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I guess I would just like to check in with the homeowner to see it, when that tree was cut down. And if, because it's shown here on the plan, I don't know when these plans were drawn up. And, mm -hmm. and, and it probably was, if anything, perhaps ignorance of our. Um, so what you could do, you could say that um, tree replacement is required for that pine tree. Um, and prior to prior to construction, the applicant has to submit um, information about when the tree was cut and the size of the tree, and tree replacement will be required if it was cut, you know, within twelve months. Yeah, and and very possibly they didn't do it in any malicious kind of hidden way. It was just a, a, a mistake on their part. But we want to be clear that this is not kosher. Correct. So, yeah, and that that was out of our scope. Yeah. So sure. Before we sure. engaged in yep. this work. Yep. Is that okay with the board? Yep. When does that 12 month? When does that start? I mean, well, so if you cut the tree on January 1, um, if you take out a permit in October, you're still within that 12 months. If you take a permit out on January 2nd of the following year, yeah. yeah. No, uh, the day you cut the tree, 12 months. But then, yeah. Yeah. Based on when you take the permit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you start, when you apply, right? Yeah, so not 12 months ago from tonight, 12 months ago from when the permit's pulled. Yeah. Okay. So they could save perhaps a couple of thousand dollars if they do all the time. <laughs> okay, but I'm yeah. sure you'll have that conversation with them. They're not yeah, and that's, that's I not, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, okay. Good. Trees are important. Yeah, I, I was going to get up and say something earlier. I was like, oh, no, good. Uh, Lots of different angles. And you're familiar with our lighting ordinances. I, I apologize. I don't know if a lighting plan was submitted with this. Um, we have exterior lights. They're always the dark sky compliant downcast. Um, I'll make sure we're refreshed on if there have been any changes since I last read that. Yeah, so Google Earth is just from September 22. So. <laughs> And you can see that big tree. Yeah. All righty. Um, any other questions? Uh, let's open it up to the public comment. Is there anyone here in city council chambers who would like to speak in favor or opposed to the application? Hearing none, we'll turn to the Zoom room. Couple of, uh, couple of people there. No. Nope. Nobody has raised their hand. Is there a motion to close the public? Well, if we've closed the public comment, remember we can't ask the applicant any questions. Everybody, anybody have any questions for the applicant? I just have a comment from DPW. These are all technical details and I can email them to you, but they just had a um, comments about the um, where the water service needs to um, connect from and T and all that. We, we had Larry out on site. Okay. Um, he inspected the basement and told us exactly how he wants to see it. Uh, we had that sewer line scope as well to know okay. location and depth for tie-in. Yep. So all the utilities are coming from the host house? We're following all the building department requirements. 
Um, sometimes uh, in this detached example, um, what we're typically seeing, and I don't want to speak for them, uh, what we're typically seeing is they want to see a separate water meter tied off or grab, not a separate curb cut for the water. Yep. They want us to grab before the existing meter and run a second meter. Um, and then we're often, you know, it's again, no second curb cut for the sewer, but we can go grab it in the yard or in the basement of the existing dwelling, depending on what works better. And it'll be an all electric. Correct. All electric. And, and yep. electric is from the house also. Um, in this case, there's overhead service wires right along Bliss Street there. Um, so if we are attached to the main house, um, it's that ordinance of one overhead service. In this case, we are detached, so we'll go grab a new 200 amp service from the street. Street from okay. the overhead wires that are there. Yep. If the applicant has the resources, underground service to the um, to the panel would be great, but I know that that's a cost factor. Yeah. Um, it, it's a cost factor, um, you know, in our ever changing world, we, we do a lot of work across the state. Um, so we are doing a lot of undergrounds, but in this case, those overhead wires are literally right, right there. We can't, um, and, and I can't speak to in, in the top of my head, where the nearest pole is in terms of, because if we're going underground, we'd come down. I'm sure. Pole, so, um, okay. Yeah. Um, Any other questions for the applicant? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion has been made by Jana White, seconded by Melissa to close the public hearing. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Okay. Um, so we heard a condition about um, the. the ex Accepting the second driveway. Well, that wouldn't be a condition. You're accept you're approving the plan as is, the and then the conditions okay. would be prior to issuance of building permit. The applicant has to submit a documentation about when the tree was removed and provide tree replacement post construction if okay. it was within the last twelve months. And in their in the next set of plans, any to address any of the recommendations from the DPW. Yeah, they don't, they won't need, I don't think they need new plans. It's just part of when they file the building permit, they have to do it the way DPW and the plumbing inspector requires with the T's and all of that. And I think we also have a waiver for the traffic mitigation on this one as well. So there are two, so it's not, that's not a condition. That's kind of a waiver. Okay. Everybody's comfortable with the second driveway in this situation? It's going to be case by case. Okay. All right. I move to approve the uh, site plan at 35 Bliss Street, map ID 22D-083 with the conditions, with the waiver for the traffic mitigation and the condition related to uh, possible tree replacement. Great. Okay. Motion's been made by Jan White, seconded by Rich. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very much. Good luck. Yeah. Keep building those little homes. We'll see you next month. Okay. Not lying. <laughs> All right. Um, we just have some minutes to approve, I think. Yes. Uh, sure. All of May and all of June. <laughs> All caught up, huh? That's great. Minutes we uh, minutes of May 9th, May 23rd, June 13th, and June 27th. All right. There a motion. I'm gonna point of order. Please. I need to abstain from three of those because I wasn't a member of the board for three of those. If I abstain, can we still approve them? So first, you only need four, but well, first, first, you're accepting the minutes as part of the record of the board. So it doesn't matter that you weren't at the meeting. Oh. Um, oh. And then second, you only need four. <laughs> okay. 
It's nice to have someone look at the minutes and review it. Carolyn always likes a little editor, a little wordsmith there to catch her Do. typos, you know. Sure. She doesn't want it to become public record, but <laughs> so motion's been made. Uh, we need a second, I think. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to accept the minutes from those four meetings. Any discussion? Thank you very much for bringing that up. Um, all those in favor? Good. Unanimous. No way in ours. Okay. Not the last time I checked. I hope there are. <laughs> Motion to adjourn at 927. So move. All right. Motion's been made. All those in favor? Thank you.